Today, I'm gonna to show you how to set up an easy DIY photo studio for your shelter. So how we started was very basics. We got a few things from Amazon. I'll put the links below um, this video, but the basics you want is you're gonna want a stand to be able to hold backdrops. Amazon has tons of backdrops you can order. Um, you can get uh, paper ones, you can get fabric ones, you can get um, more of a, uh, I don't know what this would be called, not leather, but leather type, um, different things um, that you can use to incorporate in your backgrounds. You wanna have different background options to have new refreshing photos for the dogs that maybe just the plain white isn't working and etc. cetera. Um, one thing to remember with some of the backgrounds though, if you're getting fabric, you wanna make sure to get a steamer like this um, so it can get out the wrinkles because wrinkles show really well in photos. So you wanna make sure there's no wrinkles, other it's just not gonna look right and then you're gonna have to edit it um, afterwards. So this is just a setup we use for like kittens, cats, puppies. It's just a basic table. We have the back drop, drop holder here, just a simple backdrop, and then we have two lights. Um, you can look online for all kinds of lighting tips. Generally, you can put one like right here so it, the light hits the front of the face and then one a little bit more in the back so it hits, um, it removes any shadows behind them. You can use things like toys, um, treats, anything like that to get them to look at you. But this is a very easy setup for um, smaller dogs, puppies, and cats. Now for the bigger dogs, um, we have a bunch of different options. Here we actually um, nailed this to the wall. This is his basic whiteboard, but it looks really nice whenever um, you shoot on it. You just have to edit out the lines, but this is a really cheap option. Um, another option is if you want to spend a little bit more money, you can get um, these things that actually hold the paper rolls. The paper rolls are a little bit more expensive. They look really nice on photos because they're a matte background. Um, and if they get dirty, you can just pull them down and then cut them off, but they are gonna be a little bit more pricey. I would say starting off, I would just use the regular backdrop. Um, as far as lighting, there's lots of different options on Amazon you can look for. Um, I would start off with just a very basic setup, which is usually just two soft boxes like this. Um, and I would also recommend getting a ring light. Ring lights really help make the dog's eyes pop. Um, and this goes in front of them. So as they're shooting, you wanna shoot through here. I'll put a link um, for these below and also some videos on um, how to mess with them, uh, the lighting for your um, shoot. So for flooring, um, most of the time, your photo backdrops will end up going all the way down, similar to what I was showing you over here. You just wanna make sure that there's no crease whenever you shoot it because you want it to be very seamless. But for those that don't have um, a full length, there's different options you can do. We like to get these wall panels that you can get at Menards or any um, local store. It's only $20, but it looks like it's real flooring. Um, and then it's okay if it gets dinged up because it's just pretty inexpensive. Um, another option you can do is get some cheap rugs. Um, you can throw those down. Um, for the paper, the paper you usually bring down all the way so that there's no line. Um, but of course, just get creative and explore with what you, resources you have. So we like to use some props out in our photos as well. Um, these are just some donated chairs people have given us through the years um, that we put the dogs on or the cats. Um, I suggest go to like a local thrift store, find some cool, um, just interesting pieces that could look good in the photos. Um, for puppies, we even have cute little things like toy chairs, um, which you can actually get it pretty, pretty anywhere. This is just a dowel chair, but these make really cute photos as well. So it's always nice to be able to dress up the dogs. That makes the photos pop. It really uh, brings people's attention to that photo versus all the other ones that pop up on Pet Finder. So tutus are a very easy thing. Um, this I think we got off Etsy or someone made this. This is just ribbon. Here, come closer. Okay, this is just ribbon and they just took tool and tied it around it. That's all yeah. it is. You can look, I'll put a link below on how to make these. There's some videos on YouTube. Um, we also have things like boas. You can get at the dollar store. More tool, you can just wrap around them. For the boys, we like to use bandanas. This is just a piece of fabric someone cut. Um, of course, you can find other bandanas pretty cheap. And then we like to get bow ties up on them as well. We don't always put clothing on all of them. We're, when we do the shoot, we're trying to do some with and some without just to have a, a few different options. But um, the tutus seem to get a lot of traction on our social media.
Okay. So whenever you're taking your photos, it'd be great if you could get a nice professional camera. I know that's not always an option, so if someone has an iPhone, you can use that. Um, the portrait mode, which most of you guys should know, um, is an option on, I want to say, let's say release the, the XS Max. Um, but what it does, it kind of blurs the object, anything behind the object, which makes it really focus on um, the animal's faces. So that it looks really nice. Um, you can even mess with like the different lighting on it. But if you are able to get a nice camera, um, I would recommend either a wide set lens or uh, one that's a little bit closer in. I don't even know the technical terms. You don't have to either. If you find someone to do this on your own, you can. But this lens right here that we have, it's a 1.8 slash 50. Um, this really blurs the background and focuses on their face at well and it looks really nice. So this is just a Sony that we got um, gifted to us, uh, 6,000. Um, and if you have someone that can go through and figure out all the manual settings, great. If not, shoot on auto. But it's a great solution for you to shoot with. So I'm going to show you just for demonstration purposes, lights aren't set up or anything like that, how to get them to pose. So if they know sit, great. Lakin's going to be a good model. Come here. I'm going to kind of guide her with the treat where I want her to go. And then I'll stay right in front of her and ask her to sit. Wait. So I, usually, it's nice to have a helper with a photographer. So if I'm the helper, the photographer would be getting the photos. They might make, might make um, high-pitched noises, use a squeaky toy, something like that to get the animal to look at them. She's so <laughs> um, just anything you can do to get them to sit. Now, not all animals, when they first come in, know how to sit. So we know that. So another option is to put a leash on them and just help hold them, have the photographer have someone behind them start making high-pitched noises, things like that. And then they can um, edit out the leashes um, later on. Um, I'll put another link on um, a tutorial we give to our photography assistants on how to help um, with the photographer as well.